Hi, I'm Crafty Patty, and I'm here today to show you another great video and another way to reduce those plastic bags and cling wrap. Yes, we're making beeswax wraps. Beeswax is food safe and has natural antibacterial properties, so it won't go rancid. If you have leftovers and don't want to put them in another container, then this is the answer. You just put some wraps on your bowls and your salad's ready to go back into the fridge. They can also be used to wrap up sandwiches and you can make cute little bags like this, by the way you fold them. They're good for fruits and vegetables and I've got some cheese wrapped up here. They're great for giving for gifts. You can use them for anything that's not really liquidy or not meat because you can't wash them in the hot water because it's wax. So you need to wash in cold water with a bit of soap and that's how you clean them and then you just drip dry. If you want to have something that you can store your meat in or something very liquidy, then you should go to your silicone bags like this. This you can use for meat and for liquid items. If you want to know where to get these, this is one of the videos I did recently on a review and I'll leave the link in the description box below and you can find out where to buy these. I'm going to show you four different ways on how to make these wraps. There's tons of information in this video. I know it's on the long side, but I'm going to give you four different ways to make them. And I've got tons of probably your questions with your answers. And that I will leave in the description box below because there's so much information I could give you. This video could go on for hours. So I'm trying not to make it that long. So keep watching. We're going to show you how to make these. And I'm sure you'll be really happy with the recipe that I'm also going to include for you. So let's start making some great beeswax wraps. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pre-wash all your fabric and I'm using 100% cotton, you can use unleashed cotton, you can use muslin, anything that is a really thin fabric. You can also use bed sheets and you can use men's shirting, whatever you can find in 100% cotton so it'll absorb the wax. The other thing I've noticed on some of the sites that I've viewed people are saying well once I've got my food wrapped how can I tell what's in it because you're not being able to see through it well how about if I use the green fabric and color code and I'll make sure that this is going to be for my avocados so I'm choosing a green fabric for my avocados so you can find lots of different things in your kitchen to make circles with pizza pans or canning lids or smaller bowls, whatever you can find. And I'm just using a template marking pencil and I'm just going to mark around just to give me some guidelines. It doesn't have to be a solid line. And then I'm going to use my pinking shears to cut that out. And now that I've got my guide here, I can come in and I'll cut just to the inside of that and then you don't have that line showing. So cut out all your pieces and then you'll be ready for your waxing and you can cut circles, you can cut rectangles, but again think ahead what are you going to use them for or who are you going to give them to? And what do you want to wrap? Do you want to wrap cheese? Do you want to wrap a sandwich? And make sure that what you're cutting is going to be useful for what you want to wrap. Well, then here's another idea for you. So you're thinking, well, what if I forgot? It's an avocado in there just because it's green and it maybe it could be cucumber. How about we write on our piece of fabric with a fabric ballpoint pen which is non-toxic, and you can write right on here what you're gonna put in. So this one is a little longer. I'm gonna use this to wrap my cheese. 
So I'm going to be using these pens are by Marby. They're fabric ball and brush pens and they come in a package of six colors. I'm going to be using the red. And so I just come in, find some fun places to write the word cheese or whatever word you're writing to what you want to put in this beeswax wrap. I'm going to write cheese all over this one and just add to the design. We have beeswax. It's one pound and I got this from Michaels with my 50% off coupon so that was a good deal. I've ordered the jojoba oil and the pine resin from Amazon and I chose to go with one that has an eyedropper because then it'll be easy for this application. And this is what the pine resin looks like. It comes in chunks or you can buy it in powder form. And because I wanted in powder form for the ironing method, I went out and I took some pieces of the pine resin and I just put them inside a paper bag and then I just hammered it with my kitchen mallet and it didn't take long before I had a nice powder form. This way this will melt so much faster and more evenly with beeswax. This is how I've set up my working surface. I have it on a craft table. I've just got my mat underneath just for a little bit more protection to my table. I've added an old towel that I don't care about if it gets wax on it. I've just folded that in half. I then put on one piece of parchment baking paper. I've taped it down with some tape so it stays in place so it's not sliding all over when you're trying to iron. And then I've added my top piece of parchment paper that will go on top and also taped that on. If you're going to be doing a fair amount of these beeswax wraps, and I'm sure you will because it's gift time coming up and it's a great gift, just go to the second hand store and pick yourself up a grater. You can try to wash these with hot water and a lot of soap. I wouldn't advise doing that in your sink because it could plug up your drain. So just buy one and use it for wax and you'll be good to go. We'll put the grater right over top so we don't have to pick it up again. And our ratio is going to be two beeswax to one of the pine resin. Okay, so I would say that we've got about two teaspoons there, maybe two and a half. So I'll just spread that out evenly. Now we're going to come in with, because we're doing a two to one ratio, one teaspoon of pine resin. And I'll just shake this over so it's evenly distributed. And we're going to come in with a few drops of the jojoba oil. Let's let that drop loosely around. Probably about a equivalent to maybe about a quarter teaspoon. Now we can add our other layer of parchment. And we're going to come in with the iron and melt it into the material, the fabric. And as you iron, you'll be able to see where it's dark. You don't know that that is nicely melted. I'm just pushing it off to the sides. And it's not necessary to do the back side because this will soak right through to the other side. Now this is where you want to be quick. Pull it off and pull it off and it soaks right through beautifully. 
and it doesn't take long for this to dry up. And then you can just place it on a drying rack and then do some more. And you can hang them to dry on a clothesline, which this one's actually already dry, but I'm just placing it here on my clothing laundry rack just for now. Let me make some more. And this round was about an eight inch circumference. And this little one I'm gonna do now is also about an eight inch square. So I'm gonna use the same amount where we're gonna have about two teaspoons of grated beeswax and one teaspoon of pine resin. And as you might have seen, when we talked about earlier in the video, was adding some lettering. So I thought this was a good little size for a line. So I've added the fabric pin to this one. And now I will know when I have my line wrapped up that inside I have definitely got a line. And again, try to just evenly put that throughout. And some people ask, can you use soya wax? It doesn't work as well as the beeswax. For one, beeswax is antibacterial, so it's very food safe. And soy wax has a very low melting point, so it won't work as well as the beeswax. And we'll the parchment again. We'll iron it till it's all melted. And is this going through to my iron? No, it's not, because the parchment is preventing that. It will only stay on the other side of the parchment paper. It will not go through. So here I'm just pushing the wax all to the edges so I can see it underneath the parchment paper. You can see that there's a part here that's not quite done, so I'm just going to push it over. As soon as you've finished ironing, bring that parchment up right away and peel it off right away. Again, give it a little wave and then put it on your drying rack and do some more. For method number two, I'm going to give up this grungy old cookie sheet and give it to my craft room. But if you want to reuse your tray, then I suggest you just cover all of it with a very large piece of heavy duty aluminum foil. That way you'll protect your pan and it won't get ruined. But as you can see, it's pretty grotty, so I don't care. So I have again grated approximately one cup of, or a little bit more than one cup of beeswax. And then I'm gonna be adding again because my ratio is always two to one. So I'm just gonna put in about half a cup of the pine resin. So I'm just gonna mix this up together. And um, pine resin, is by all means not toxic. It's a natural source coming from trees. So you don't have to worry about handling it or, you know, the fact of anything for vapors or anything like that. It's, it's not bad for you. In fact, some people probably make chewing gum from it. I wouldn't want to make chewing gum from it, but I'm sure some people do. And so I've just dispersed that a little bit more. And I'm going to come in with two tablespoons of the hope oil. So I don't probably need my dropper this time because we're using a little bit more. So I'll just come right in with my little spoon here. So there's one and I'll just disperse that. Try to do it evenly throughout the pan just to help it out. And one more. Now we're going to put this into a 300 degree oven and wait for that to melt. 
So we're going to pop that into the 300 degree oven. I will set my timer for about two minutes and I'm just going to check on it and we will take it out when it's totally melted. Two minutes are up and we'll see what that looks like. And there's our melted wax. And now we're going to come in with our piece of cloth, our fabric. Just put it right in there. This is where it might get a bit messy. Just a little bit on the corners here. And it's a little bit warm, but it's not so warm that you can't handle it. So I'm just dripping off the rest of it so I can get it over to my other piece of fabric. So what I've done is I've come over and I've laid this waxed one over another one because this really soaks up a lot of wax. So there's this piece. I'm also gonna put another piece on top. And then I'm gonna use my iron. And I'm gonna iron through all those layers. And that excess wax will pick up on the other two pieces of fabric. You can already see it coming through. That's how much wax there is on that middle one. And you really don't need that much wax. So method two, it disperses the wax and the pine resin and the whole oil and makes this look really well. But I just find that you get a real excess of wax that you don't need and the only way to make use of all that wax is to iron like I'm doing so it goes through the other layers. And now this won't have a total saturation but look how much wax there is on that one. So we're just going to take this off, just place it there for now. This is the one that we put into our tray and this has got plenty of wax on it so I'm going to leave that one just like that it's got a nice saturation now I'm going to leave this one down and I'm going to just go in and re-dip the edges on this one because the only part that isn't saturated is along the edges and we've almost made three from one application. So I'll just go back over and dip it into the wax. So because I've been talking and demonstrating, this is solidified, so I'm just gonna pop it in the oven again to get that melted, probably just for a minute. And now I'm just gonna come in and dip up these edges that didn't get saturated. let the last strip off and then I'm going to put it back onto that other one again and give it an iron to take out the excess. So now again I've still got that first piece we put down there and it's not quite saturated so we're going to use this one to add more wax to it. Bring our sheet over again and iron it again. We're going to let all that excess wax soak through to the one below. And that's nicely saturated now. Now this one it's pretty much saturated. There's only a few areas left 
just a little bit on the edge here. So we'll dip that again and iron again. Or while you've got it here, if you've got a little bit of leftover wax, you can just sneak it up. In fact, there's a little bit of wax on the edge here. I'm going to put it right over that edge and iron and see if I can soak that up enough to cover that one edge. Let's see if that will work. Just like pushing it over. And we've now got a complete waxed third piece. So a good way to do three in one. But for this method, I'm finding it, it's a little bit messy. I've got wax everywhere. That first method, I was still pretty clean. And number three is to use a double boiler. And this time I'm using wax that I actually got from right from a bee farm. So I'm gonna put, instead of having to chop it all up, I'm gonna just pop it right in there. And I'm just gonna take it out when I've got enough wax melted and we'll just take out the rest. And then I'll add my pine resin in the Jehovah oil. And of course this pot here, I picked up again at the secondhand store. And so I'll be using this just for my wax melting. I won't be using it for anything else, but that's the way to go. You don't have to worry about cleanup or anything or wax getting into your special pots. So I've got about a cup of wax melted in there. I just want to get this chunk out so I can still handle it and get it out of there. Just put it on some parchment paper over to the side. And I've got about a cup of melted wax of the natural beeswax. I've turned this down to a simmer now. And I'm going to just approximate about half a cup here so I know how much I've got in here. I'm going to just dump it out to about here. And we're just going to stir this until that pine resin has all melted. And you can see that the pine resin, I'm turning this check. Stop stirring, it's kind of got little globs on the bottom. So you've got to keep stirring until all of that has melted. So that didn't take long at all for that to melt down because we did use the powder and there was only a few little bigger pieces in the powder that I didn't, of course, pound down to a fine powder. And so now we're ready to add our two tablespoons of hobo oil. and stir that in. So I've just got the water simmering below now just so it stays melted. And now you're going to be kneading tongs because this is definitely very hot. So you're just going to dip it in. And then grab hold and pull it out and let it drip in the pan. And then we'll just use our baking sheet from before and let it drip over here. So we'll just pull it out. Give it a bit of a wave again. This method as well, you'll get nice saturation. But again, I find that there's going to be too much wax. So we're going to use the same method as we did before and we're going to place it in between two other sheets. So I've already got one down here that I have not waxed yet. This is the one we've just pulled out of the pot. And you can see it's got quite a bit of wax on it. I'm going to come in with the third one and we're going to wax it like a sandwich. And we'll iron again. And this will bring that wax out of that middle one and it'll start to saturate the one on the bottom and the one on the top. And then pull off the middle one. And there's your middle one 
messy wax with not too much, but just enough. That's what you want. And actually I see right here, there's actually quite a bit of wax that's accumulated on the edge here. So I'm just gonna put that back in and I know I want to do some more ironing right in that area right there and I'll just put it right here so it absorbs right in that area of the fabric where there's no wax. I'm just gonna smooth that area out. And let's see how that looks like now. Just do an inspection and it looks much better now. We've got an even amount of wax everywhere. So that one's finished, ready to be dried on the rack. And this one here that I used on the top, look how saturated that already is. It's almost ready to go. So this is only gonna need a little bit of a dipping and then we'll bring it and put it on top of this one again. So back to the stove. I'm just going to dip it into the edges here. I don't need a lot of wax on this one because the middle one is the, the middle part of this one is already pretty much ready to go. So I don't need a lot on it. Just be a quick dip. We'll let that drip off again and over to my tray for the final drippings and I'll take it back over for the ironing and you can see how it's uneven because I re-dipped here this was already waxed so we're just going to come in and I think this time we're going to leave this one out because I just want to even this out a bit more And I just want to see an even wetness all the way through. I'm just going to inspect it and see how, we, how it looks. And this time we've got it well saturated, but we've got too much over here again. So I'm going to put on this one that hasn't been waxed yet. And we're just going to let this bit of the wax come off onto this piece here by just pushing it off. And it's a little bit heavy on the side right here as well. So I'll just move it down. And now uh, we have another one. And that's the process. You decide which one works for you. The last two methods for me are a little bit messier, but you get a really good saturation and an even distribution of the pine resin, the wax, and the jojoba oil. So that's the benefit of dipping and using the oven method. And as far as folding them, if you take it, and fold it and just add that little bit of heat, you can see already that it's making a great seal. And when you open it up, there is absolutely no cracking of the wax. That's because we have the pine resin. If you make these just with beeswax, you're gonna get the cracks. So to make them properly, follow my instructions and you'll be very happy with the results. Talking about oil, I mean, yes, we're using it for our wraps, but I've got wax still on my hands, and that's not gonna come out the soap and water because of course water repels wax, right? So I'm just gonna put some on my hands here, rub that in, and of course, jojoba oil is meant for this. So even though we're using it for beeswax wraps, it's great for your skin too. So rub that in, take a paper towel, and the wax will come off your hands. Okay, 
So I go to bed, I'll wake up in the morning, and as you know, Crafty Patty, my mind never shuts down because I've got so many craft ideas in my head. So now I've thought up another way to apply the wax and make great beeswax wraps. Remember how we did the double boiler method? Well, I was going to the stove, dropping in the fabric, carrying it back to my ironing section, and it just seemed like a lot of steps. So, I remelted my wax. I've got a little bit left that I want to use up. I'm going to just tip this so it's secure. The handles are sitting on each other. And now I'm going to use a cheap brush that I got from the dollar store. It's a Craftsman. And I'm just going to brush on the wax. I'm right here. Easy enough to access. I'm not having to step all over the place and come back. And the beauty of this is that the water below in the double boiler is going to keep this wax warm for me. Whereas when you worked with the tray method going in the oven, as soon as it came out of the oven and it was sitting on top of the stove, it wasn't going to stay melted. So you have to keep putting it back in the oven. So let's see how we do with this method. Now you can see that I've got a piece of material here that's bigger than my parchment paper. So once you've got half of it waxed, we can just fold over the other half. And now let's wax this, wax this side. And this is a great way to use up the rest of that wax in the pot. I have a lot of questions and answers for you in the description box below. So you might be thinking, well, how do I wash these? That's simple. It is wax, so we're not going to use hot water. We're going to use cold water. So you can just take them to your sink and add a little bit of, you know, a mild dish soap. And you can either use your hands to wash them, or you can use a cloth to wash them off, and then you just let them air dry. Easy peasy. And you might be thinking, well, how long do these beeswax wraps last? Well, of course, depending on how much you use them, probably you get a good year out of them. And do we throw them out? No, we don't throw them out. What we do is if the wax starts cracking or they're looking on the older side, we come back and we do exactly the same process. We just take our beeswax, we re-wax it, iron it, and you're good to go again, so you don't have to throw them out. All right, so we've got two sides waxed up. Doesn't matter if it's setting, that's okay. I'll just tip that up for safety reasons. And we'll come in and we're gonna iron this again, That's always. Back with the parchment paper, and again with the hot iron. And you can grab a corner here, open it up. And now we have both sides waxed. And as always, give a little wave. So what do you think? This method is less messy, it's more convenient, and the fact that we've already got our wax, our resin, and the whole oil all pre-measured in the pot, you're ready to go, you get even coverage, you get exactly what you need. So I don't know, I think this is gonna be my favorite method of all. And if you find that you've actually put too much wax on your sheet, then you know what to do. You come in, you add a fresh one, and you just, iron again to 
to soak up some of the extra wax. And this is the only thing you have to be really careful doing is you don't want a lot of wax and you don't want not enough wax. And this is what will make the perfect beeswax wrap. And it's really, you're gonna to have to go trial and error and you'll get a feel for it. And as soon as it dries, you'll know. You'll think, okay, well maybe this one could have used just a little bit more wax or this one's too much. And you'll get the hang of it. So there you go. Number four, four different ways. I like this one the best. So I ended up using every last drop of the beeswax mixture. I ended up making 30 wraps. I added up all my expenses, calculated how much I used of each product, and I came up with a figure that each one is costing me 75 cents. So a real saving if you're gonna make your own. Remember that cute little one I made just for my line? So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna activate your beeswax. What I mean by that is you're gonna actually crunch it up. This will get the stickiness going and that's what you want to activate it to get it to stick to each other. So don't worry about it not looking pretty because now it's going to work really well. So you can feel it. I don't know if you can hear that. Here's your stickiness because we scrunched it up. So for my line, I'm just going to bring it up on all sides, do a little twist. And there it is ready for the fridge. And I know it's a line because I wrote on it. And here's the green one I made for my avocado. Again, I'm going to activate it. Now it'll be ready for using. In goes my avocado. Here's another way to fold it. Bring them up. Fold it like you're folding a present. And I'm going to come in, do a little wrap, and you can do a little twist, just like a little present. And there's your avocado ready for the fridge. And again, this is the one I wrote cheese all over. So I know when I wrap this one up, I'll know it's my cheese. So again, I'm going to activate it. Here's my cheese. Let's go this way. We're gonna fold again, like a little present. And then in and in. And there's many ways you can fold these, whatever suits your fancy, but I thought you can even bring it up over the top if you want and just do it this way. And bring this one up as well. And it'll stick to itself. There's the cheese. So this one is a 13 inch square. We're going to fold it in half. We're going to bring our corner over about a third of the way. I'm going to bring this corner over the other third. And now this is going to just pop inside the other half of that third. And now we've made a little pocket right there. So here's a little pocket so we can pop in our sandwich and then just fold down the little top.
and your sandwich will stay nice and fresh for your kitties to open up. So there you go, there's another darling little idea on how to use them. They're also great for using for wrapping up anything you want in a bowl. So again, I've activated this and it's just a matter of bringing it around using your hands for warmth. And also the beeswax wraps, they cling to each other. So if you're folding over, this is what's gonna make a, a real good seal around your bowl. It will stick to the bowl, but it's better if you overlap it and get it to stick to itself. Like so. And there you have a nice cover for your leftover salad or whatever you're making. And you can pop that right in the fridge, no more cling wrap, and a beautiful cover for your bowl. And you might be thinking, well, how am I gonna store these? Well, one cute way is to just, you've got, I've got four wraps here. I'm just gonna roll them up into a little roll. And place a piece of parchment paper around them. Just to protect them from dust. And I've saved my old wax paper box. How about we just pop them over there? And instead of using cling wrap, you're using beeswax wraps. Or you can just take them and fold them up in half, fold them up in half again. And just pop them like that in your drawer with your wax paper. And if you want to give some for a gift, you could fold them like so. And I'll just do a little bit of a roll in a cone shape. Tie a little ribbon on them and give them as a gift.